Hi all and welcome to Jay at 3am. Following on from questions and comments I received from my last video, I'm going to be sharing the techniques I use when using layer masks, inverted masks and masking brushes to blend layers or add objects to a scene. I'll be running through three examples to show how the same technique can be used to achieve different results. The examples will be timestamped in the description below if you wish to jump to a specific example. So without further ado, let's get started. In this first example, I'm going to show the method that I use to paint in detail using an inverted layer mask and demonstrate how easy it can be to alter a person's appearance by simply overpainting detail from a second image. So for this one, I'm going to start with a black and white portrait that I obtained from Unsplash. And we're going to be adding a few less attractive features using a second layer and blending the two together using an inverted layer mask. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull in and place my second image. I'm just going to lower the opacity so I can see the layer below. And obviously we need to try and make sure that the eyes, nose and mouth line up as best as possible. I think that's good enough for me. So once I'm happy with the placement, I'm going to increase the opacity back to 100%. And I'm going to rasterize that layer to turn it into a pixel layer. Now with that layer selected, I'm going to come back down to the bottom of the layers palette and I'm going to add a layer mask. With the layer mask selected, I'm going to press Control or Command and I, and that's going to invert the layer and hide the image itself. So the rule of thumb is black conceals, white reveals. Now to paint the detail back in, I'm going to select my brush tool. I'm going to use standard stock brushes and I'm going to use a very soft brush. I'm going to leave the hardness at zero and I'm going to reduce the flow down to 15%. For your color picker, make sure white is selected. Like I said before, white reveals and black conceals, and we'll want the painting over the black to reveal the detail below. Once your brush is selected and your color picker is at white, it's just a simple matter of painting back in the detail. And I wouldn't be too concerned if you overspill a little bit because we can change the color picker back to black and paint out what we don't want. And using a soft brush means that we don't have any hard lines or hard joins between the two layers. Add a little bit of detail down here onto the neck too. And as you can see here, we've gone a little bit too far. So change the color picker back to black and then just simply paint it back out again to blend the two layers together. I'm now going to add a black and white adjustment layer. And just slightly adjust to make sure the two layers blend together. And that is it. A very, very simple way of overpainting detail using an inverted layer mask. In this example, I'm going to be using exactly the same method as previously shown, but this time I'll be adding a rust texture to the car. 
For this one we're going to start with a photo of an old Volkswagen Beetle and we're going to make it look even older by adding some rust to the door panel and some of the bodywork. So the first thing we need to do, as previously, we need to pull in and place our second layer or texture. Place it roughly where it needs to be, lower the opacity so we can see the layer below. And place the texture where you want it to be. Increase the opacity. Right click on the image layer and rasterize to turn it into a pixel layer. With that layer selected, we'll come down to the bottom of the layers palette and we'll add a mask. And as with the previous example, with the layer mask selected, we'll press Ctrl or Command and I to invert the, the mask. We'll then select our brush tool, select a nice soft brush. We'll keep the hardness at zero and again I'm going to reduce the uh, flow to 15%. Make sure our colour picker is on white and then we'll paint in the detail. As before, don't be worried if you overspill because we can change the colour picker back to black and paint out any um, any detail that we don't want. So I'm going to change the colour picker back to black and I'm just going to go around the edges to, uh, to remove any overspill. Of course I'm doing this a little bit quicker than usual um, for the sake of the video but obviously when you're taking your time you can place and paint in um, the detail with a little more accuracy. I'm just going to reduce the size of the brush a little and I'm going to paint out the uh, texture over the door handle. I think that's looking about okay. Next make sure the layer the image layer itself is selected and then we're going to change the blend mode to darker color and that's going to blend the two layers together and make it look like the rust is actually on the car rather than the separate image and we can do the same for the rear quarter panel so if we file place our second texture As before, we can reduce the opacity to place it where you want it to be. Select the layer, right click and rasterize to turn it into a pixel layer. With the image layer selected, down to the bottom of the layers palette and select mask. With the mask layer selected, on the keyboard, we'll hit Ctrl or Command I to invert the layer. Select our brush tool. Make sure we have a, a soft brush selected. Hardness zero, flow at 15%. To our color picker, make sure white is selected. And then we're just going to paint in the detail where we want it. And like I keep on saying, don't be too worried about overspill because we can paint it back out if needs be. Which is exactly what I'm going to do here. So change the colour picker back to black. And then we're going to paint out the overspill. And as before, make sure the image layer is selected and we're going to change the blend mode to darker colour. And there we have 
a nice simple way to add textures to objects using an inverted layer mask and changing the blend mode. Finally, with this example, I'm going to be using a combination of layer masks, inverted masks and the pen tool to paint in detail and add objects to the scene. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring some detail into the sky. So I'm going to file, place, and I'm going to bring a cloud layer in. Just place the image. I'm going to reduce the opacity just so I can see where to place it. right click rasterize to turn it into a pixel layer and then with the layer selected add our mask with the mask layer selected I'm going to press ctrl or command and I to invert the layer now as before select our brush tool and I'm just using a standard basic soft brush with a hardness at zero and I'm going to lower the flow down to 15%. Just check our colour picker and make sure white is selected and then it's just a simple matter of painting in the detail. Now I want a little more detail in the sky so I'm going to bring in a second cloud layer, open place, second layer, roughly place it in a position, lower the opacity to place it, and right click and rasterize to turn it into a pixel layer. With the layer selected we add our mask, With the mask layer selected, we press Ctrl or Command and I to invert the, the mask. And again, we select our brush tool. Make sure white is selected on the color palette. Hardness at zero, flow at 15%. And again, we just simply paint in the detail. A little bit of overspill there. So I'm gonna change the color palette back to black and paint that out. And with this layer I'm just going to lower the opacity slightly so the two blend together. And that's our sky detail done. The next thing I'm going to do is bring in an object and place it into the foreground. So again file, place, And to make the selection this time, I'm going to use the pen tool. And with the pen tool selected, I'm going to go up here to um, the different modes and I'm going to select smart mode. And this helps Affinity to uh, track the shape of the object that you're cutting out. I'll zoom in slightly, make our starting point, And just simply make points along where your selection wants to be. I'm rushing this a little bit for the sake of the video again. Obviously the, the more time you take, the, the more accurate your selection is going to be. But for quickness and for the sake of uh, ensuring I don't bore everybody to death. I'm just doing a very, very quick selection. This is just basically to show you the technique that I use for making selections using the pen tool. We're nearly there. Uh, 
Now once your selection is made, we just hit the select at the top of the toolbar here. At this point, I'm going to right click and rasterize it, turn it into a pixel layer. And now I'm going to hit Control or Command and Shift and I. And I'm going to invert that selection and then I'm going to press Delete. And that will leave us with our selected object. Then Control and Command and D to deselect. Go back to our Move tool. And we can size and place the object. just going to add an adjustment layer just to alter the brightness and the contrast slightly to try and make it blend a little more into the uh, the background image then with the image layer selected I'm going to add a mask and this time I'm not going to invert the uh, layer mask I'm just going to paint in the detail using a masking brush so brushes and for this I'm going to use a grass shaped brush now the one I'm using here is one that I made myself but these are readily available and free um, from sites such as brush easy so select our brush and as you can see we have a kind of a, a grass shaped brush here this time we need to ensure that the color palette is on black to paint over the white mask and you can see here when I move the brush over what it's going to do is it's actually going to paint in uh, the layer beneath and it's going to give the impression that it's actually grow air uh, grass on top of, of the rock itself. What I tend to do is um, alternate the size of the, the brush as well to give a different level of detail. And as you can see there, it looks like the grass is actually growing in front of the rock and the rock is placed into the foreground there. And it really is that simple, just painting in the grass using a grass shaped brush. And the last thing I normally do when putting together composites is I'll right click and merge visible and that'll bring everything into a single pixel layer and I'll take that pixel layer and I'll take it into Affinity's develop persona. Here we can change exposure black point, brightness and I normally adjust uh, the clarity as well to just, just to bring out that detail and one final thing I normally do is I normally add just a little bit of noise to give it that um, film grain look and once you're happy just simply click on develop and there you have your final composite and just to show before and after before and this is after using affinities develop persona and there we have our finished composite so I hope you got something out of this video and you found it useful thanks for watching Take care and I'll see you next time.